What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. And in today's review, we're gonna be taking a look at a product called Drum Tree by Premier Sound Factory. So this is a drum library, of course, that isn't actually talked about very much. And I think it's because the company doesn't really um, have very aggressive marketing. Uh, even their demo videos on their YouTube channel, it's just like one or two videos uh, showing a live demonstration of the product. Um, well, actually there, there is one kind of like walkthrough type of video but uh, I, I heard this library used in a few um, commercial tracks and I thought it was really, really cool. And then I checked it out. Um, and then, I, yeah, I thought it was really, really interesting. So um, Premier Sound Factory was kind enough to send me a copy to review for you, uh, to show you the, you know, s some of the stuff about it. And I'm really excited to, to do that. So one of the things you should know right off the bat is that this library um, is not for kind of hip hop, um, rap, or any drum machine type of beats. For those, you'll have to go with other sample packs or make your own samples. Uh, this product is a, a recording of, I think it's 26 different styles, um, different kits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 26 different genres of drums plus a user kit, which is kind of like a custom kit for your, you to set up your own um, basic sounds without any particular style. But the cool thing is about these is that you can actually uh, mix and match different parts of um, other drum kits to make your own custom kit, which is really, really cool. So anyway, um, yeah, so, th you know, this is a uh, a solely acoustic drum kit library, and it's it basically is like a multitude of drum libraries all packed into one, hence the price tag of, I think it's around... Uh, three hundred fifty dollars, if I'm not mistaken, uh, at the at the time of this recording, uh, on their website. So I, I just want to go through and play you the the demo of each style, so you can get a sense of what they sound like. So it's separated into three sections. This is all the pop stuff, uh, kind of like rock as well. You get the um, soul and reggae uh, styles there too, and then on the right you get your jazz styles. So let's start with '60s Detroit pop. I'm just gonna go through and play. Um, each of the examples so you can hear what the kit sounds like and then underneath you'll see the blue key switch or the, the blue uh, playable range below um, where all the samples are mapped out so here we go okay let's keep going number two I realized I didn't actually have to click the stop button. I can actually just click on the next one. But 60s R&B, 70s UK hard rock. Unless the loop comes to an end, then I have to press play again. You can hear those like funky guitars going on for sure. King of reggae. I'm trying to lay you down easy. I'm sorry, I know I, it's uh, not a old retro reggae band, but. Okay, listen to this one. This is like instant uh, Michael Jackson here. Right.
Radio. Um, I'm a freestyle rapper. I don't know that I ain't dapper. I don't even know what that word means. Okay, Neo Soul. Ooh, now you got some like almost like jazz vibes there. You can get some chill chords going on, you know, blue stuff. And here's what the user kit sounds like. All right, cool. So that's kind of all the uh, the rock, pop, um, soul type of kits. Now we have the jazz stuff. So let's start with 3D's Big Band. Now, now you'll notice right off the bat that uh, these sounds are quite um, mixed and mastered, ready to go. And that's one of the biggest selling points of this library, actually, is that it's very plug and play. You don't need to do much, if any, processing to the sound uh, once you input it into your track. Um, I believe it's Ichiro, uh, the the founder and the creator of this product, who uh, you know mixed this uh, this library and mastered it as well to accommodate pretty much any style that you want to, uh, or to accommodate any track, I should say, that you want to input this uh, you know these sounds into. Um, so you you don't really need to do much EQing or compression to these. Um, it's already been done for you, so you just put it in, and it'll cut through, and it'll, it'll be punchy right away. So uh, really cool stuff. And, and the 70s, you know, uh, the 70s kits, true to their name, have kind of this retro sound to it. It's not entirely like HD sound. It's a little bit of a more retro feeling, which is cool. So have a listen to the 30s big band now, and you'll hear it's a little bit more mono, a little less, you know, spread out. Um, and the sound is a little bit more, I guess you could say, um, old or retro, but it's quite true to the style, so. That's to me. That sounds super realistic. I, I love that um, that you know rush sound, twirling on the snare. Really really cool. All right, contemporary jazz. Now these have a more stereo sound, a very very crisp and clear. Um, you'll see what I mean here. Instantly filled with the stereo field. You know, instantly. dream to play grooves like this but you know i'm not a drummer technically i'm a percussionist because i play piano so i'm i'm you know i'm taking that all right jazz funk so very like you know a, a drier sound quite a snappy snare to that one and then modern jazz this is awesome. You hear this in like mid 2000s um, kind of recordings. 2010s, dark and dry. Okay, Brooklyn.
Pop Jazz. All right, and there we go. That's all the styles. And you've uh, hopefully got a good sense of what each of these sound like. And you know, again, you'll notice that the sound is very professional, very crisp and very clean. And it just cuts through the mix very easily, um, even with, you know, a dense track, dense arrangement. Um, it's been it's been treated very well, uh, you know, this library. So in the preference page, you'll see where um, each of the drum parts are, I guess, you know, mapped to the keyboard. And so in the manual, Ichiro says that uh, only the jazz kits have brushes. So here you'll see the brush, uh, you know, mapping up here. And so actually if I go to, you know, let's say a modern jazz kit. And then let me try some of these uh, hi-hat open and closed brushes on A sharp five and G sharp five. So that's open brush and then um, cl closed brushes F sharp five, just like that. Now you hear there are round robins included here. So this um, it, for the brushes, it's especially perfect because if they're doing the same motion over and over and over again on the drum, you don't want it to sound the same every time. So it makes sense that there are multiple takes included in here. And I believe um, it's either the kick or the snare has up to like 54 round robins or something. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of content here and uh, you, you'll get a very, very uh, realistic sound. So. Now for basically every drum kit, it's it's mapped very similarly. So the kick is on, let's see here, what is this? C, well, it's middle C, C3, so then that would be C1. So where are you, C1? Um, let's see, right there. So there's there, there it says kick, snare is D, D1, rim is E3, floor tom, um, left tom, high tom, and so on. So it's all, it's all mapped out very, very uh, naturally and very logically, um, very similar to other drum libraries as well. So I can very easily play patterns. That was absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, anyway. Um, you have all your basic, you know, drum parts uh, plus some others here as well. In case you wanted a cowbell, for example, and uh, you can you see you have these options up here: um, randomizing velocity, um, you know, timing, tempo, and accents. Those those are all in the manual. You can read those as well. And I think this feature is really cool here: roll versus kick. So if I press down the pedal right now, you see it's set on roll. So if I press the kick button, you see the roll is being it's activating on the kick, right? Let's let's try it on the snare. And as soon as I let go of the pedal, it's done. The other option is to mimic an actual drum kit, and when I press the pedal, it activates a kick. So, so I'm just doing that using the foot now on the on the sustain pedal, which is really cool. Put that back to roll there. Cool. And then here, um, it's very customizable because you can um, say the overall type of kit you want. You can put that in here. You can switch out the snare, the hi-hats. Um, you have four symbols you can choose from. And then here you have ambience. So like the reverb, you guys, you could say, uh, they recorded uh, two convolution um, reverb signals uh, in, a, in two studios, A and B. And then this is the amount of reverb that's applied. So if I go to completely dry, maybe I'll do it on snare. Versus B Studio. So there we go. And then here again, you can, um, you know, you can save the setting and then load it up as you want there. Uh, this is kind of your like your mixer. So you know some parts of the kit will be lower than others. Um, just tweak that to taste as you like, and you can tune them. Uh, then, you know, there's also gate, low cut, and pan uh, options that you can fiddle with as well for every single part of the kit. So this is actually pretty, uh, pretty unique actually. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, the GUI is really, really cool. It looks kind of cute and funzy, but this library packs a serious punch. Uh, oh, I also want to show you um, they come with patterns. So you'll, you'll, you know, one thing that's good to know is that this library does not come with actual recorded loops, but it does come with these patterns. So the patterns that come with this library are very authentic and they, they sound wonderful. Um, you know, very, very realistic. And the great thing is that they're all MIDI. So then you can actually go through, for example, I pulled up this MIDI file and I can, you know, change it around. Um, if I don't like certain parts of the kit, I can move it to another part of the kit and change the timings. Um, as much as I want. So in a way, it's even better than loops because it gives you way more customability and um, you're not locked into any specific performance there. So these are all the patterns. You get 27 of them. Uh, this, this is your uh, samples folder, folder um, your settings folder, and it's uh, contact player friendly. So it loads right into the library tab. So where is it? Right here, Premiere Sound Factory. You load it up. It's so easy. It's literally just one patch. You drag it in and boom, there it is. So uh, let me just quickly sum up um, the greatest feature of this greatest features of this library: um, the instant playability, uh, the uh, very intuitive mapping of the samples onto the keyboard, kick at the bottom, snare, toms, uh, rims, you know, all that cool stuff, symbols above that, um, and the sound is is fantastic. It's mixed, mastered, ready to go, plug and play into your productions, and it's just. You know, it cuts through really well, so you don't really have to do much mixing to this anyway. And actually, Ichiro recommends not to mix the drums because they've already been done. And um, there's actually a, more of a chance for us to overdo the mix and ruin the sound. So you just want to avoid that. And, you know, just the overall selection um, of these acoustic drum samples is quite, you know, mind-boggling if you think about it. It's like 26 drum libraries put all crammed into one. And yeah, it's, it's, you know, it sounds fantastic and it is very, very practical. So um, thank you very much for watching. This is Premier Sound Factory's Drum Tree. Uh, retails for $349, I believe. Um, and yeah, it, it, you really get what you pay for. So it's, you know, it's maybe out of a hobbyist range, but if you're a professional looking for a really good acoustic drum library, again, it's not made for like beats or anything. If you want to do that, maybe look into uh, Realitone's Hip Hop Creator or something like that. But um, for acoustic drums, nothing can really beat this, I think. It, it's, uh, for, with the amount of content it comes with, it's wonderful. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I